In the sensory enhancer category, we offer a range of emollients, emulsifiers, and texturizers derived from biodiversity stocks. So the key sustainability considerations here are the total life cycle impact. With the sensory enhancer, you should really be using something that has the best life cycle impact. There's so many options for sensory enhancers, and it's not the same performance consideration you might have for switching out another type of technology. It's really all about aesthetics. So using the most sustainable material here is really possible. Feedstock renewability and biodiversity is really key, again, because there's so many options for emollients. Using a renewable feedstock that supports biodiversity is really crucial. I mentioned one of the reasons I'm here in India is to visit the castor farms. So this is just one of the feedstocks that we use. The castor bean grows in really marginal soil, um, so it's not having a big impact on biodiversity the same way that you know palm has an impact on biodiversity by being grown in a really rich biodiverse location so these are some of the things we look at when sourcing feedstocks or sensory enhancer category is really looking to unique um, different plant sources that give that renewability and again support the overall ecosystem health so this category started um, probably around 2012 with our introduction to the uh, responsible, uh, the round table on sustainable palm oil. So we became a member in 2012 addressing our impact on palm. Um, and then we, we take basically two approaches to this category. One is to improve and to improve and address our impact on palm and our impact by buying palm-based ingredients and also to diversify through other plant sources. So we developed the line in 2013 using brassica and that expanded in 2016 with a whole range of biodiverse feedstocks, brassica, olive, castor, coconut. We have really a nice range of, of materials that give you unique sensory properties by using the the plant sources from all of these different plants, sugarcane, corn, the list goes on. <laughs> it's really about diversification here. But again, we continue to address also the palm industry as the palm remains a really crucial crop to this entire industry and to sensory enhancers specifically. So in 2018, we went 100% RSPO mass balance and we have maintained this that status for the past five years sourcing exclusively mass balance certified palm. Our biodiverse product portfolio continues to expand in 2019 and 2020 with the amino sensor expansion and Sistolio TL product launch. So we saw this shift about focused on feedstock procurement. We saw this shift in the market really hit around 2020, um, perhaps related to the uh, the COVID pandemic introducing more um, reflection on how we impact each other and our environment. Um, the conversation on biodiversity really picked up. And again, the products throughout this range support that um, biodiversity throughout the world wherever we're sourcing a feedstock. So some of the key technologies here in the emollient side, um, Lexfield Natural, this is one of my favorite emollients. Not only does it feel nice, light, and dry, it also has um, a really amazing naturality prof uh, profile and sustainability profile, and it's achieved Cosmo certification, Nature, actually every natural certification that we, we certify our products to, Lexfield Natural holds. So whatever your sustainability requirements, that's a great go-to emollient. I mentioned Valiflex, which doubles as a silicone alternative, um, but it also in the sensory enhancer category offers moisturization, film forming. Um, Sistolio DS, DCS is a nice lightweight emollient. And we also have emulsifiers and texturizers in this range, um, starting with Amino Sensil SC, the skincare component of Amino Sensil, and different Sistolio products from PA, which is a brassica-derived structuring agent, to TL, a coconut-derived texturizer.